What you're looking at is Nick Coppola from Fast Times at Ridgemont High playing Brad's bud. What you're looking at now is Nicolas Cage, a movie star. Nicolas Cage has an amazing range as an actor. Started out in these comedies, whether it's Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Raising Arizona, can play the romantic lead, Moonstruck. At the height of his stardom, he went through a crazy action phase with the likings of The Rock, Face Off. He was also in the family-friendly stuff like National Treasure, which is an adventure film. And then he took a chance on comic book movies. Hey, what if you have to pee while you're on fire? Oh, it's awesome. It's like a flamethrower. You know, it's like... <laughs> After the unsuccessful portrayal of Ghost Rider, people started to claim that Nick Cage was just doing roles for DVD just for the money. I think when you pair the talent of Nick Cage with a tremendous script, you get all of Nick Cage. And that's what we're seeing in the past 10 years. A departure back to the actor, Nick Cage, from when he was doing Leaving Las Vegas, an adaptation, those kind of roles. The past five years, I've noticed with movies like Mandy, Pig, and now last year's Dream Scenario. Nicolas Cage plays science teacher Paul Matthews, who's nothing more than a family man who only wants to get his novel published. But one day, Paul arrives in his class to a full auditorium of people that are seeing him in their dreams. What starts out as an innocent dream turns into a nightmare. Throughout Dream Scenario, the editing kind of blends together between the dreams and reality. We're not sure what to believe at some points, and we see the dreams come out, play out vividly in our minds and our screens. They're quite gruesome at times. It's There's a progression between reality and the dreams, where Paul is just observing in dreams. That escalates midway through. Some fulfilling sexual fantasies, and some being murdered. Word gets out that Paul is turning up in all these people's dreams. He becomes famous. He's interviewed by several news outlets. And there's even possibility of getting his book finally published. Paul loves this. Paul is head over heels, loves the attention, loves the ego trip. He's finally getting his due until things turn on him. And the dreams become more violent. And Paul is blamed sort of like a cancel culture type thing of you know as a, as following the main character here we're totally with paul we're, we we are with paul on the mystery like why is this happening to him and so on there's even a scene where one of the book publishers takes advantage of paul and wants to recreate one of her sexual fantasies that she's had with him but it's a classic case of don't meet your heroes it goes horribly wrong when the reality versus the fantasy overall i really enjoyed the style of dream scenario where every scene would intercut with things from the past things from dreams things for you could really sense the inner workings of paul williams and the other characters and their dreams you get it's sort of an inside glimpse into their mind i think this is the point of the whole story is to really dive into like the whole idea of dream controlling and you know now that we're heading into this ai and chip in our brain type society, I could see this becoming a thing where people are trying to capitalize on hijacking dreams. So dream scenario doesn't go where you expect. I expected this to go a certain way and kind of be that A, B, C, D formula, but dream scenario is not. It kind of turns things on its head by the third act. And I really appreciate it. I went with the, the story. I thought it was great. Now as Nick Cage performance here, he plays a family man very well. He gives up his hairstyle for a bald look. He plays with his restraint and he goes full Nick Cage when he needs to, particularly when he's being wrongfully canceled. He also has like a little bit of an accent that I feel like he really plays into the age of being a 60 year old teacher and sort of plays the character as a down and luck family man who's really dying for a break and finally gets one when he is you know popular for being inside people's dreams supporting cast also includes michael sarah and julianne nicholson as nicholas cage's wife i really enjoyed all the performances here there's a lot of like dry dark humor throughout and they even acknowledge the comparisons with nightmare on elm street Director Christopher Borgeli directs the heck out of this. I think the visual style that he brings to this material really elevates 
uh, what our expectations. A lot of the effects in here seem really practical, and I really appreciated his choice of shots and angles. There's a lot of low angles and unique, different perspectives that we don't normally see in movies. It appears to me that the film was shot on, on film. Uh, I don't really see any digital grain. I see a lot of film grain to my eye, and the colors are very great. This is an awesome display visually and audio wise a24 and lionsgate put this out you're going to get some nice special features here deleted scenes an audio commentary with writer director christopher borgerly dream like nobody's watching featurette and some trailers so a lot of things to like here from this release it's another winner for a24 and i think nick cage should have got some considerable oscar buzz for his performance as paul matthews i think nick cage proves again and again it doesn't have to prove it he's done everything in the business that he could possibly do as an actor he's stuck with movies mostly and i don't i you know he's mentioned retiring and i think when he retires we're going to have a hole to fill in the business and i think nicholas cage is one of the best actors of his time and dream scenario is a testament to that what did you guys think of dream scenario let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Dream Scenario. And as always, this has been Return of the Disc. I'm Dan.